up, everybody, and welcome to the Weekly Flare Podcast. I'm James Walter, and with me is Mr. Sprint himself, Chris Garcia. Hello, everybody. Hello. You guys can get 50% off your data plan if you come over from Verizon, AT&T, or T-Mobile. Yeah, if you want to switch to the worst network in America. (laughs) That's T-Mobile. No, T-Mobile actually has passed up Sprint. Really? We're in the second tier. They have... Um, actually, in some cases, have better than AT and T, and even Ooh. on par with Verizon. Wow! As in far as their speeds are concerned, and their customer satisfaction is better. You heard it here. So folks. I was actually going to talk about T-Mobile this week, <laughs> but um, I, I didn't because well, I mean, I am now, but I decided not to originally because um, the the biggest problem they're having is their coverage as a whole. So while they're for GLTE, they actually have more coverage, I believe. I know it's more than Sprint, and I think it said that it was actually more than AT&T now. But I do know that when you have a, a good 4G connection on T-Mobile, it's uh, it's sometimes better than Verizon speeds, actually. It's funny. I think some of that has to do with less users. So in those areas where they have a good connection, there's just less people using the bandwidth. Still very impressive. I actually, um, there's a, I've had about four or five customers in the past week that have switched from T-Mobile, and I don't know why. I guess they, they're just the, more satisfied. The problem with T-Mobile, their biggest problem is the areas where they don't have good coverage, they just have no coverage. Mm. So the areas that they have covered, they're like really strong, and then they just don't have don't coverage. Don't have it, yeah. That's been... My understanding for anyone I've actually talked to on T-Mobile. Now, T-Mobile themselves obviously don't really say that, but in practice, that's kind of been the case. Gotcha. But that being said, uh, yeah, they kind of rate higher than Sprint on pretty much every metric except for actual coverage, I think. This is new. new this is news to me. Yeah, so take that to your manager and listen to him. Actually, I don't remember exactly all the numbers that were reported for that. I just remember saying that as far as speed's concerned, uh, their their 4G is on par with Verizon's in most cases. Um, like I said, I know that their overall coverage isn't as high as even Sprint's. I know instance. overall Verizon is in Tier 1, mm-hmm. and we're in Tier 2. Yes. And I don't know where AT&T is. I believe they are considered a Tier 1. Tier 1. There you go. And like I said, I think that T-Mobile's a Tier 2 technically. But like I said, when they when they have a good 4G, their speeds are amazing. They're pretty good. Part of that has to do with they bought a bunch of Spectrum from Verizon, oh. a lot of the 700 megahertz, so they have a lot better range and penetration. Um, some of it has to do just with the fact that there's less people on it. So when you have a good signal, there's less people using up the bandwidth. There you go. Um, but yeah, uh, people aren't, aren't down with the Sprint. Hate to break it to you. That's funny because I work in it and it seems like we're doing really well. Well, I mean, everyone has their choice, you know, and exactly. Sprint does have a good priced plan yes, as far do. as for data that you're yes, getting. Um, but that's not the only metric. True, there's a lot of there's a lot of things that you have to look at. Uh, like I said, I I don't know if I could say that Verizon is hands down the best network to be on, but uh, I spent about two years on Sprint, well on Republic Wireless, which uses Sprint's network, and uh, it was the most inconsistent cell phone service that I've ever seen in my life. Mm. It'd be 3G, 4G. Sometimes the 3G would be faster than the 4G. Wow. Sometimes both would just do nothing. Um, I'm not sure how much of that had to do with Republic Wireless, except for my dad has now switched to Sprint and said that it's actually worse being on normal Sprint than it was on Republic Wireless, apparently. Wow. We've spent in the past two years so, about thirteen billion dollars to get us back. So I don't, I don't want to. I actually don't mean to trash your employer. Oh no! Actually, as far as cell phone carriers go, um, they're not terrible. No, honestly, they just, not. just they not don't the have best. the infrastructure. That's they're not all. the best. They just don't have the infrastructure. Which I mean, T-Mobile honestly doesn't either. Like I said, just less people. So when you have a good signal, less people using up that bandwidth. Gotcha. That's probably the biggest thing going for T-Mobile right now, as far as their speeds. Um, I don't know what Sprint's doing with their speeds, though, because gotcha. seriously, it was very strange. Verizon's issue is uh, they still think they can charge an arm and a leg for yeah. their service. Yes. Um, it's hard to tell them they can't 
because it's still just a lot yeah. better. Yeah, it's a lot better. Uh, their customer service, though, is hit or miss. I've never had bad luck with them personally, but I know people who have consistently had terrible luck with their customer service. I know a lot of people have had bad customer service with AT&T. Uh, and you, there's people everywhere. I mean, yeah. we could probably find people who have had bad customer service with T-Mobile, who's notorious for having good customer service. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you know. There you go. Anyways, I wasn't going to talk about that. Clearly, I'm unprepared for that. Oh, it probably fine. said a lot of things that are my opinion and not actually fact. That's okay. But for the most part, I think it was fact. Yeah. Or at least as factual as one could be when talking about cell phones, which everyone is pretty biased towards their carrier typically. Mm -hmm. Unless you live in an area where that's your only choice. Exactly. In which case, you probably hate them because they have no reason to be better. Exactly. So anyways... How about we talk about something that we were going to talk about that is kind of related to this whole bandwidth yes. situation. Mm -hmm. So the Super Bowl is coming up. Yes. I don't know if you were aware. Oh, yes. Uh, the Super Bowl turns 50. It's an old dude now. He's probably not playing much football during the year. Mm -hmm. But he gets his one day. Everyone huddles around to watch him. Uh, seriously, though, Super Bowl's coming up. It's in uh, the Bay Area, which is... Uh, I guess, cool for the Bay Area because they get to show off all their technology mm -hmm. that most people probably are completely unaware that this stadium has because, seriously, who cares about the Bay Area when it comes to football? Never. Not that. Is, there the, is that the 49ers? 49ers, yeah. yep. Uh, and you got the Raiders across the Bay. Yeah, I heard that they're moving to San Diego maybe or something, though. The Raiders? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's, like, for sure, but I heard that they were looking at moving. Uh, but, no, the 49ers... Um, yeah, uh, being a Seattle fan, I have to not like them just because apparently that's a thing in Seattle. It's a rival. Beats me. I don't care that much about sports, so I would not know that, mm -hmm. but whatever. Um, but anyways, back to the, the Bay Area Stadium. Their stadium is sweet. They have, get this, not 40 megabits per second data speed, but 40 gigabit per second wow. internet speed in the stadium. That's fast. Yes, it is. I have 50 megabit here, and that's just my download speed. There's this, the way it read was 40 up and 40 down. Wow. Uh, yeah, 40 up is insane. Yes, it is. 40 downs is 40 gigabits down is insane. 40 gigabits down and up is just stupid fast. Now, here's the catch. I'll say that's for the whole stadium. Mm -hmm. But they also have one, uh, well, let me think the way this was worded correctly. They have one like internet pipe coming in for every hundred seats. Okay. So for every hundred people in there, there's another tube of internet basically coming in. So if you imagine, uh, people hate this, especially electricians hate this example, but whatever. If you imagine a water pipe. Okay. And you know each water pipe can carry X amount of water at a time, right? No matter how fast it's flowing, and still only carry X amount of water at a time. So basically, the more pipes you have coming in. With that speed, the more, you know, the better it is mm -hmm. for everyone collectively, whether you're trying to fill something up or mm -hmm. get something out. Um, I think that 40 gigabit is like the collective amount of all those pipes, probably. Either way, that's really fast. And um, it's going to let them do a lot of cool stuff this year. CBS is tatting off all sorts of crazy things that um, they're going to be able to do, including apparently be able to see the view of the field from the quarterback's perspective. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, I don't know if that's part of the Super Bowl app this year or if that's something just for in-stadium people to do since they have all that just bandwidth floating gotcha. around. But that's pretty cool. There's going to be, cool. if you're in-stadium, you can have like 16 different replay angles you can watch from because you can see all the different cameras mm -hmm. and you're able to tap into that with your smart device and, you know, see all the different replay angles. Um what was the other really cool? I mean, this is just something that in that stadium, like you can check like the bathroom line, you can check if there's closer parking. Um, you can just tour the stadium virtually if you want on your device. The stadium has a lot of really uh, neat stuff you that can is do. Really I cool. think it said you could order your food. That's the, that, mm -hmm. I'm happy about that. Yeah. Um, the tech for this Super Bowl, I saw something that said Super Bowl 50 out does Super Bowl 52. Al's 50, right? In Roman numerals? Yeah. X is 50. No, X is 10. X is 10. V, v is 5. V is 5. X is 10. Al's 50, yeah. L is 50, yep. Okay, so it said Super Bowl 50 out does Super Bowl 52 in tech. 
So I don't know. Because I mean, they've already been out the Super Bowl for mm. a few years, I, I think is how that works. So I don't know where it was at in 52, but they're going to probably be trying to fix that situation. Yep. So here's the thing. Last year, everyone at the Super Bowl um, transmitted out of the stadium over like a terabyte of data. Terabyte, not terabit, terabyte of data. So 40 gigabits is uh, going to take a long time to hit a terabyte. Mm-hmm. And I imagine it'll be even more just with all the stuff that everyone's doing like part of the Super Bowl production and then all the fans on top of that. How many pipes do you think are running in there? About 7,000? Well, it said one for every 100 people. And it Ooh. fits probably what, roughly 70,000 people in the typical Seven, football stadium? 7,000? So probably around 7,000, I guess, pipes Maybe coming 75, in. 75,000 pipes. And like I said, that you know, they, you can do that with lots of different ways. It could be... You know, coming from the hub, it's, you know, a, a bigger line, basically, of all, mm. all bundled together. It, there's a lot of ways it could accomplish that instead exactly. of actually having 7,000 individual lines. Yep. Like I said, it could just be from the hub one huge pipe that's equal to that amount of individual lines. I don't know. Gotcha. Like I said, the stuff that I heard between what I heard this week and what I've read, nothing was super clear on what that number actually means. That was just kind of the way it was explained in the, in the thing I was listening to. Let's hope that there's a tech expert that goes to the game and will write a blog post well, about it. Well, here's the thing. It's in the Bay Area, so there will probably be a lot of tech people there. Good. There's been a lot of tech companies involved in all the stuff you know that goes on leading up to the Super Bowl. Um, Amazon actually has a Super Bowl commercial I heard this year. Good. Um, which that's crazy because aren't Super Bowl commercials going for like a million, five million for a 30 second spot? Mm-hmm, I think so. Isn't that what the guy said last year after yeah. how successful the Super Bowl was? Yep. Um, which, cause like, you know, the year before when the Seahawks like just destroyed the Broncos, uh, I imagine the viewer numbers for that Super Bowl in the second half were not very good. No unfortunate for the advertisers who got placed in the second half whereas last year went down to the last play um those are the number that's the way you want the super bowl to go yes you want it to be a very back and forth down to the last play battle because it's better for your ads exactly so you know we spent a long time talking about it's it's great talking about sprint and the super bowl we spent a lot of time well, talking about I, ba- data bandwidth. Well, I, I think what we can say is we'll probably cover. Um, we'll probably. I'm going to look at some blog posts after the game, mm-hmm. and there'll probably be some a, a couple days after. And we, they'll probably talk about what was available there. Maybe some pictures, videos of what oh, they experienced. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. There'll be Somewhere. like there'll be like the figures of like how much data was, and now with like live streaming being a thing on people's phones, which I imagine the NFL is going to kind of frown on, specifically CBS because. Yeah. It'll take viewers away from the TV. But I imagine there'll be some of that going on, which yep. is going to, video is going to really shoot the numbers up higher. Uh, it, it'll be interesting to see what happens. Um, just between people tweeting pictures and Facebooking their rants about the refs and then the video streaming. That, plus everything the, the NFL and the CBS is doing on top of that. To stream it out to internet and to their TVs, and if you say that it's sixteen, uh, sixteen different angles uh, yeah. that we're gonna look at a play, this is gonna ruin the ref's reputation if something goes wrong. Yeah, I think that's in stadium. You have to be in stadium to get the sixteen different replay angles. Well, you're gonna, you're gonna have but, a lot of people like looking back, and they're gonna say this is not right. And then well, a lot of people, people do that back. anyway. So I mean, true. But now they'll have a better. Excuse. But now they can just watch the replay at their leisure while the game's going mm-hmm. on, which like. Yeah, I get the refs make bad calls. It happens. Uh, it's a game. Get over it. Like, they're human. They're going to make mistakes. Mm-hmm. Unless, like, it's really obvious they're just blatantly trying to favor a team over the other, which does happen from time to time, Yep. sadly. Typically, that's not the case. They just made a mistake. Like, I don't know. Like I said, I, like, care about sports enough to, like, know kind of what's going on with the teams that mm. I follow but not enough to really care about anything about sports, honestly. Gotcha. You're in it for the commercials. I'm in. I'm in to sports for the sake of it's just something fun to be, you know, to to watch. You know, yep. I don't watch football all year. I just watch during the playoffs and uh, Super Bowl. Gotcha. During the rest of the year, I keep up with the scores for the Seahawks just because I like to know what's going on, and I keep up with the scores for Kansas City 
because Rachel cares about what's going on. And the rest of football could not exist until the playoffs and the Super Bowl, as far as I'm, as far as I know, unless something really big happens. So, who are you going to be taking? Well, I'm going to have to cheer for Carolina okay. because you know I live in Carolina, and you live in Carolina, you traitor. I'm going to go for the Broncos uh, up three points. I don't, I don't really care. Madden says the Panthers win by two or something like that. Okay. And they've predicted correctly nine out of the last, oh, I don't remember how many, but it was more than 50%. It was like close to 75% okay. accuracy. Um, and who wins? And then last year they even predicted who would win and the exact score. Ooh. So. I'm just, I'm going to take the Broncos win by three. I don't. That's just what I'm going to do. I don't, like I said, I honestly don't care either way other than Rachel cannot stand the Broncos, which apparently is something being from Kansas City. Wow. Beats me. I didn't know anything about that. Um, also, she does not like Peyton Manning. So she especially does not like the Broncos. <laughs> wow. Um, I don't care other than this will probably be Peyton Manning's last Super Bowl. Most likely, yep. So it'd be nice to see him at least have a good game. Whether he wins or not, it'd be nice to at least see it be a good game. Mm-hmm. But like I said, at the end of the day... There, I have no stake in this game, just like every other year, even when Seattle was playing. I root for them, just like I always pick a team to root for every year. But at the end of the day, when the game's over, about 10 minutes later, I'm like, it was a good game, whatever. So it's kind of nice sometimes not caring enough about sports to like have a real big stake in every game. About, yeah. You know, it's nice. I really get into the games. I really enjoy watching them, honestly. I really do. I know it sounds like I don't. I really do enjoy watching even football games and whatever during the year. I just not into it enough to like get really. Where are you watching? Probably over at my parents. Gotcha. So, are is a PS Network playing it or anything like that? Nope, just CBS. Gotcha. And then CBS has an internet stream that I don't remember exactly how you get access to it. I don't remember if you have to have cable or there's some way you can get it if you don't have cable. I believe that's streaming either from NFL or CBS. Okay. I don't remember exactly, but whatever. I'll be watching it via CBS on cable, so that'll be fun. Awesome. I guess. I like to eat and watch the Super Bowl and see the good commercials. And Mm -hmm. who's doing the halftime show? I don't know. I don't know either. I have no idea. Normally, I know because it's a big news. And Should be Taylor I've Swift. I've heard zero about it this year. We'll get you an update uh, in the middle of the half. Beats me. Anyways, speaking of things we don't know why they're happening. Uh, yeah, that's a good segue from we don't know who's doing the halftime show to uh, Circuit City's coming back. Yes, it is. And why? Nobody knows. No one knows. Nobody Cir- knows why. Circuit City is no longer short-circuited. No, they're coming back, they're but coming not back. as a big box store like Best Buy. Coming back more as a like clean display, uh, kind of like a bigger Apple store, I guess. Maybe like a mix of an Apple store and a Microsoft store. Okay, they're gonna have like three D printers and like I guess phones. More unique stuff. Yeah, they're gonna try and be more like a boutique, you know, electronic boutique gotcha. type type store, you know. Real clean layout, like nice white. It at least was the you know the stock image that that they kind of were using with the story. Mm-hmm. Thoughts? I'd like to see where this goes. Um, remember, Radio Shack did just pretty much shut down every store they have. Pretty much, yeah. And uh, remember, in two thousand eight, Circuit City declared bankruptcy and closed down every store. Everything, yep. And now they're gonna come back as Circuit City. It's cool, I guess. Um, I thought the Tiger Direct had like basically taken over their website. Um, but apparently, Circuit City is going to come out with a new website because that's really the only way you can survive anymore. Yes. It's having a nice website for people to look up what you have and then see if it's in store or not, which surprisingly, Walmart does a really good job of. Have you used Walmart's online, like their app for a while, especially who had really good, like up to date in stock for that's stores? Good. So that's interesting. But yeah, anyway, Circuit City is coming back. Uh, yay, I guess. I don't... I'd like to see where it goes. I'd like to see what they have to offer. If they have competitive pricing uh, on par with Amazon's, then it would be interesting. Mm-hmm. If it's on par with Best Buy, I'm not interested at all. 
The first one that opens up in the Carolinas, I think I'll go take a look at and see what Yeah, they so they're the starting offer. in Texas, and mm-hmm. then they want to branch out with around 50 to 100 corporate-owned stores and then another 100 to 200 franchised stores. So we, we will see one around here somewhere. Yeah, um, I imagine within the next year or so, if this works out for them, we will see one. You'll see one at least in every state. Yeah. In the really big cities. We'll probably see one in Charlotte and Raleigh. Um, I just... I don't see this going so well. We'll see what happens. I they declared bankruptcy, so hopefully they have a good plan this time to stay competitive. I because would say somehow Best Buy stayed in business, so it's possible. Mm-hmm. But I don't think I don't know. Like I said, for me personally, they would have to have competitive prices prices on par with Amazon to be interesting to me. Because I don't go to Best Buy because. I don't think you should have to pay fifty dollars for an HDMI cable. Exactly. That you can buy on Amazon for anywhere from two to five dollars. That is also gold plated. <laughs> now here's the thing. Gold plating does not matter for ninety percent of consumers. You know why? They're gonna plug it in once and leave it plugged in forever. Yes. So you don't need the gold plating because you're not gonna be plugging it in and unplugging it, nor are you running a completely a complete system where Everything is gold-plated and high-quality connections. And so you're not gaining any benefits on the fact that it transmits the signal better, nor are you gaining any benefits on the fact that you're plugging it in and unplugging it in all the time. Now, I buy my instrument cables gold-plated because I'm plugging them in and unplugging them all the time. All the time. At least I twice. I do not buy my gold-plated HDMI cables unless it just happens to be the same price as a standard one because guess what? The inside of the cable, exactly the same. Um, yeah, it's just... It's not necessary. It's just completely not necessary to pay $50 for an HDMI cable. Unless you're buying, like, a 200-foot-long cable that has, like, a repeater inside of it so you mm-hmm. can transmit it that far. Mm-hmm. Uh, otherwise, if you're buying, like, just a standard old 3-foot, 6-foot, 10-foot HDMI cable and you're paying more than $10, you're getting ripped off big time. Yes, you are. Sorry, Best Buy. I love you. But I hate your prices. Also, it's just no, there's no reason for that. No. Like I said, there are people who need that quality for certain cases. 90% of the people make zero difference. I'd like to see Circuit City come up with some unique stuff or maybe even help market the stuff that we've talked about on the show, kind of like snaps. They are going to have, like I said, 3D printers, was mm-hmm. one of the things that the article I read said that they want to have. So, hey, I, I, th- I hope we'll see what happens. I'm I'm curious, but not hopeful. Does that make sense? That makes sense. Yeah. Anyways, what do you say we take a break? That's fine. And then when we come back, we're going to talk about... Should we tell him or should we just not? I think we should hold on a second. Okay. He'll have to come back to find out. 